off. The whole time you're rooting for this Hemingway guy to survive the war and to be with the woman that he loves, Catherine Barkley. It's four o'clock in the morning, Pat. And he does. He does. He survives the war. After getting blown up, he survives it, and he escapes to Switzerland with Catherine. You think he ends it there? No! She dies, Dad! I mean, the world's hard enough as it is, guys. Can't somebody say, hey, let's be positive? Let's have a good ending to the story? Pat, you owe us an apology. Mom, I, for, I can't apologize. I'm not going to apologize for this. You know what I will do? I will apologize on behalf of Ernest Hemingway, because that's who's to blame here. Yeah, have Ernest Hemingway call us and apologize to us, too. Hi, everybody. I'm Peter Travers. This is Popcorn, where we tell you what's happening at the movies. And there's a movie now that you're all going to see, you're all going to love, because I told you to. No, you're going to see it, and the movie will make you feel that. And it stars Bradley Cooper, who you've just seen in that clip. And we very cleverly have made Bradley Cooper appear here. Look With at real him. popcorn. With, no. Oh, wait. No. <laughs> Don't be rude. Don't break the illusion. It's just that it's all illusion in this business. Rather than me sitting here telling you who you play, I think it would be fun that we started this by you saying, who is this guy you're playing? Sure, yeah. Oh, good you remember you need time. some little bit of a nudge? What's that? You, want, you need a nudge to know who you're playing? <laughs> yeah, let me you know, I, mean, I know you do a lot of movies. You're probably in hangover mode. I don't know. No, but, I'm not, no. actually. Okay. Uh, we are in the middle of hangover, hangover. but uh, um, no, I can't get this movie out of my head, actually, because um, uh, David O. Russell, as you know, is one of the best directors there is. And the great thing about him is he's co a collaborator. And uh, I was able to executive produce with him on this and be a part of it, not just when we filmed it. So I've seen this movie about 9,000 times during the editing process. <laughs> so if I, if I can't remember who Pat Soltano is, please send me away to a small little facility and I'll go quietly. Well, Pat certainly was in the facility. <laughs> yeah, he was. So, it was. Um, so why is he in there? Why yeah. when we first meet him has well, he been put away for eight months? Well, you know, he, uh, he made a plea bargain with the courts. He walked in on his wife sleeping with the history teacher of his high school, and he beat the hell out of him. And instead of going to jail, he pled insanity so he wouldn't have to do time. <laughs> but what happened, he went to, into the hospital, and they diagnosed him as being bipolar. So now he's out of the hospital. He's not really admitting that aspect of himself. He doesn't want to take his medication. He doesn't really want to go to therapy. He just wants to, he's figured out how to get his life back, mm -hmm. which I know I can relate to, and I assume you do. Sometimes you're in a situation and you just feel like- I haven't got mine back yet. You have it, okay. Then you're still I'm in waiting. the throes of it. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Uh, and he, you know, thinks that he's just going to read his wife's syllabus, who has a restraining order out against him. He's just going to get his job back, which is never going to happen. And, he, and he's going to get his life, which his life now is he lives at home with his parents. He's got no car he, they won't even let him have a phone um, and through the course of the movie this this unbelievable essence comes into it called Jennifer Lawrence in the role of Tiffany Maxwell mm -hmm. and she helps to open up his ability to live in the moment of oh wow things can actually change without me trying to control it but the cool thing is she also is going through stuff she Tiffany Maxwell has just lost her husband and cop. To, yeah, yeah. a cop who mm -hmm. got killed uh, tragically trying to do something romantic for her mm -hmm. and in order to deal with that loss she started to sleep with everybody in the office and then you have Pat Senior played by Robert De Niro who that is guy. upset yeah that guy Robert De Niro from what was it Cape Fear uh, from uh, who was um, who was obsessively compulsive uh, to a point where it's a disorder um, and you have all these characters and that's all David cares about David Russell cares about telling an authentic story about an authentic family in a house, on a block, in a neighborhood, in 2008 is when this is set. And so what's going to happen is you're going to get a movie that's tough to put into a genre, I would argue. Because like life, when there's a tragic moment that happens, certainly in my life, there's been a lot of comedic elements that occur. Mm -hmm. you know, and yeah, usually they seem comic to us after the tragedy they seem <laughs> well you know <laughs> I don't know I, I, sometimes <laughs> during too during, you know yeah, I know when yeah. uh, you know there, yeah yeah when you were making this movie, did you all have that feeling that things were really working? Um, I definitely had a feeling like things were, were being created uh, not out of any premeditated motive, that they were actually occurring in real time. And that's exciting mm -hmm. because we shot this movie in 33 days. That's like fitting a 10-pound ball in a 5-pound bag. I and mean, It's almost impossible. And the only way to do that is to get out of your head. You show up and you just start. And the way David O. Russell likes to work also is he wants to be lit for 360 degrees so he can change he can change coverage in the middle of a take. That's amazing. You amazing. cannot do that in here. No. You go over there and it's just it's gonna a, it's be a really nightmare. messed up. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, we got so, all these no. things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. And that's exciting. That's exciting. It's like that. being in a classroom and the you know that's one of those classes where the teacher's gonna call on you. 
you know, and you, so you have to be prepared because it's not just about sitting back and raising your hand. You know, and then Robert De Niro always says, you know, some people show up bedroom perfect, meaning they had this, the role down in their bedroom. And oh, then, I see. I you know, didn't know whether it was yeah, then, something no, else was no, going on. There. But then you can't, you know, that's, that's gone. You just have to show up. And uh, it's exciting. It almost felt like a sporting event. We were all very winded at the end of every day. And that parlay scene, there's a scene in the movie where Jennifer, Tiffany Maxwell, finally, because she's an entity and then the family's an entity, and they all come together in this one scene. And, and we shot that in a day in this house, in this room. And it really felt like we were doing some sort of, you know, theater mm -hmm. experience, some sort of, like theatrical production. Well, it, it is like that in a way, but there also another one of aspect of this movie that you go, what is there's a ballroom dance competition. There are. Yeah, yes, <laughs> right. there is. Okay. Yeah. Let's take these two wounded people, these these bruised romantics. Because right. what I love about your character Pat is that he does, he's buying into that silver linings philosophy. He thinks he could convince he really wants this wife back. Oh yeah. You know? He really thinks that's going to be salvation. an answer to something. Oh, you? yeah. Yeah. So when you're working this out, does David O. Russell do a lot of rehearsals, or you just go, go right into it? No, I was in Schenectady, New York, when he called me doing a movie called Place Beyond the Pines. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, I, I want you to play Pat. The, the role has become available. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, well, of course, I'll do anything mm -hmm. to be in one of your movies. And went, But are you still shooting in, in October? Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah. That's in three weeks. He said, yeah, can you come on weekends to work on stuff? And then I said, well, I don't know if I can, but I'll just show up. And I drove down. I wrapped from Schenectady and drove from Schenectady, New York, to Philadelphia. And we were rehearsing the dance choreography the next day and shooting in a week. So there was no rehearsal, basically, but tons of conversations. And the thing about him is all he wants to do is explore with you know with the right direction but you are actually living in the character and exploring it as you're doing it you know there's not it's not about nailing the scene it's about exploring the scene and so we modulated pat throughout the first couple of weeks until we found a kind of sweet spot for him but they were a little less dramatically crazy. well it, almost yeah because you know he's the he is the foil by which you meet all the other characters mm -hmm. and the story is told he's your he's your guide throughout this mm -hmm. movie so it was very important that he's not too on the fringe because it'll be very hard for the audience to stay with him and i think we don't do ourselves any favors the first 20 minutes of the movie and it, and i we've seen you know the movie I've watched a lot of, you know, uh, screenings of it. And, you know, the audience is almost like, what's happening right now? Who is this guy? Yeah. And, then, and then we honestly sort of get them back on our, on, our, on our side, you know, and Tiffany Maxwell is the reason that happens. Mm -hmm. and, and I was nervous, Peter. I mean, I was definitely trepidatious about doing this because I'd never been asked to do something like this on film. And I knew that David O. Russell is the kind of director where you can't fake it. You have to do it.